as, yeah, as an author, I would think that you would want to use your name okay. because what about your next book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's in their butts. We are, right? We're, we are. we're shaking our butts. That's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, when one of those comes out, oh, wait, oh, oh, I got two glasses. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Who up here doesn't have an iPhone? <laughs> Do we all have iPhones? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> iPhone. Where's our money? Okay, Everybody. that's me in 20 years. Okay, ready? Right. First off, I like that the paperless, everyone that I said I didn't have a business card because I'm a bad designer, I'm just thinking about the environment. Okay? <laughs> Incredible. Okay. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the environment. I'm, I'm taking that from Chelsea over here. Um, 20 years, I'm going to be living in a cabin with a satellite dish with the hugest beard in the world and just being the biggest hermit because there's going to be so much technology. I'm just Absolutely. not going to hide in. from it. It's totally lost. Everyone's a designer. Everyone, like the creative realm is getting huge. Like it might get to a point and then drop off. Like you guys are both saying that it's like, oh, it's going to drop off. I like, I think it's an industry point of view. Like I see everyone's like, oh, like Vimeo, people are becoming more creative. People are shooting more video. People, people are finding more tools because it's easier. Everyone has Photoshop nowadays. Everyone does this. Everyone does that. And I like it, but in the sense it makes our trade harder. Like, especially with art schools. That's one reason I didn't go to school is because a lot of kids that come out of art school nowadays, they're, it's, I call them the factories. They all come out and they all do the same thing. They don't have unique input into what they do. And it's just kind of desaturating and devaluing sometimes to the design industry. Um, so I'm going to be I'm gonna be an old man in the in the with mountains a beard. with a big beard and lots of stuff in it. I'll be whittling. Yeah, I'll be whittling, and I'll get to whittling. <laughs> whittling. Yeah. The whittling tech guys fun. go back to whittling. We yeah. had the last yeah. twitter. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> last question. Okay, the last question is for uh, Ryan, and I wonder if you do uh, this podcast for a couple of years, uh -huh. and you enjoy it, but you're not really making a lot of money yeah. for it. I'm wondering what has Oh, yeah. Well, and mine might be unique, but I feel like there's something that carries through any good podcast is that there's something really personally meaningful about it, that you do it for the love of it. But particularly for Buddhist geeks, it's about Buddhist practice, and there's this drive and impetus inside Buddhists to help others, you know, with their own practice. And so when I get an email and someone says, I've gone to... Europa University in this program because of you, because of your podcast, or I went on a month retreat because I heard about this, or I started a practice because of the show. That's all the thing I need for it. So um, I would like to get paid for it. That would be fantastic. So anybody want to fund the show? <laughs> but um, we are actually working on the monetization because um, how, yeah, like religion and spiritual practice in the United States you can't use old models and like everyone's going to donate that you have to have like how uh, the Christian churches work are a lot better than how Buddhists work. And so we need to have a, a monetary model. So I would hope for that in terms of my specific show. Not to mention you've got to interview leading Buddhist teachers from around the world. Yeah, I mean, we pretty much interviewed all the way up and to like the Dalai Lama. We haven't got that far yet, but we pretty much interviewed all the big folks and we get we have access to them and I, if I get to sit down and talk to this person who I admire that's mm -hmm. awesome well, and he's I mean he's considered I mean, he's a trusted source you know in his in that field yeah. if someone mm -hmm. go to Ryan I mean tens of thousands of people would trust him to give advice around Buddhism I mean, yeah people email me with for any of your sure. businesses do a podcast for the networking and, yeah, and establishing yourself as an alone. expert yeah. yeah yeah definitely establishing yourself as an expert is probably the number one reason I think to build a website or to build or to create a podcast or to start vidcasting is it says I know what I'm talking about in this field and at first you won't and mm -hmm. then two years in you're going to be like wow I am suddenly an expert you know like not so suddenly but <laughs> yeah but I have a question for Ryan should I make my voice deeper do which is that's why you need a good mic you hear my voice, my voice and then listen to my voice over on the podcast it, it sounds totally different, different. <laughs> so a good mic will do that the guy on the geek show are you Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, a, I'm the guy who does the voiceover for Buddhist Geeks. But it's not your voice. It's not my voice. I, I, <laughs> That's I, a good I, microphone. That's what I want. <laughs> oh, it's the microphone. It's the microphone. It's the guy that does the like inner world. world. <laughs> world. <laughs> you know, like, Auto-tune, You get on the mic and you sound like this immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I need that. Okay. So, so, so you guys, we're just going to go through one more time so they can say their Twitter names. You can follow them. Um, Forrest? At Forrest Blinden with one R. At Ryan Olke, O-E-L-K-E. -E. He loves when you get that wrong. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Go somewhere else. <laughs> at Fresh Twister. At Casey Capshaw. At J Long Time. At J Larry Moore with an I. Larry with an I Moore. I'm Gwen Bell. You know how to find me. And um, please, if you love it or you hate it, rate it. Uh, so use the hashtag CU Atlas. Let us know what you thought about the panel and about this series. Um, also, whether or not you loved it or hated it, that's fine. Send Jill an email. You're in the back. Hi, Jill. <laughs> Bombard her inbox and let her know what you thought about the course so that we can make this happen again perhaps next semester. Um, And um, Bruce Henderson, please, um, well, let's give a round of applause to Jill and Bruce Henderson. Um, and let's also give a round of applause to the panelists tonight for coming and teaching us. Um, are you guys on Facebook? Everybody's on Facebook. I am. Yeah. My name, Facebook's my real name. Worse. Um, and then finally, if you, um, if you enjoyed this and you want to hear another tech panel, there's a tech panel coming up May 6th at 7 p.m. at the Boulder Theater. That's with uh, Waylon Lewis and Elephant Journal. I'll be on the panel talking a little bit about some of what you've heard here and, and next steps and that sort of thing. And uh, thank you. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.